you are one of the people who have watched my 30 minute video on a particular Half-Life sound file, you'll know that I like to listen to all of the various ambient loops of Half-Life 1. And if you like this sort of technical stuff, I highly recommend you check out this video by Matt Casey. What he did was arguably more interesting than what I did, and instead of him doing a video about Half-Life 1, he did it on LEGO Island. Same concept, but just different subjects. Anyways, let's get on with the video. In Half-Life 1, on the map C1A1F, there's a broken catwalk with a scientist on it. If you've seen my strange discoveries and things you may have missed about Half-Life, you would know that you can save this scientist by pressing your use key on him as soon as you get onto the catwalk. For some reason, this stops him from dying. But there is something else about this area that makes it unique. Listen closely. Do you hear that? Well, so did I, and I have spent longer than I would like to admit trying to search for this particular sound file, but for whatever reason, I wasn't able to. And believe me, I did check twice for it. Being a mapper for Gary's Mod, I had a couple of tools at my disposal which could aid in the search for this file. One, of course, was the Hammer Editor, and the other was BSP Source, which takes compiled BSP files and turns them into usable VMF files, which I could then put into the Hammer Editor so I could hopefully search for the sound. But this did lead to one of many issues that I would encounter during this little journey, and that was that Half-Life was made using the Gold Source Engine, and BSP Source only works on the Source Engine. Three Clicks Philip, however, did manage to get Nuke from Counter-Strike 1.6, a Gold Source Engine game, into CSGO, which is a Source Engine game. There are a list of programs that he did have to use in order to get that working, and I was getting ready to look up the video and follow along with what he did, but then I remembered something. And that was that Valve had already done all of the heavy lifting for me. If you don't know what I mean, in 2001 Valve made a version of Half-Life called Half-Life Source, which was a lazy attempt to port Half-Life 1 into the Source engine. But because of this, I was now able to decompile all of the files that I would need for this. But there was a couple of other issues with this. Number one being that because of the Steam Pipe update, Half-Life Source's directory was moved into Half-Life 2's, and for some reason, whenever you go to browse the local files of Half-Life Source, it just takes you to the root folder of Half-Life 2. But since it's not too hard to find it from there because you only have to click on like one folder, this goes into another issue, and that was that for some reason, Valve decided to make certain sections of maps into their own maps. For a better understanding of what I mean, the catwalk section, which is supposed to be attached to C1A1F, is now its own map called C1A1G. But because of mounting Half-Life Source to Gary's mod, I was able to see the icons and where all of these maps were, so it wasn't too much of an issue. So, I opened up BSP Source, went into the maps folder of Half-Life Source, and got C1A1G. It decompiled it into an easy-to-find folder for me, and I opened it up in Hammer. Now, before we go any further, you should know that I am using the Hammer Editor for Gary's mod, and the reason why there aren't a bunch of errors, white textures, and obsoletes is because I mounted Half-Life Source onto Gmod's Hammer Editor. So, there I was in Hammer, checking out all of the ambient generics for something that could help. But, once again, I came up empty. I thought maybe that I missed something, so I opened up the Entity Report and checked all of the ambient generics. But, same thing, I came up empty. Now, it should be known that before I even had the idea to use Hammer, I thought maybe there was a command to show all of the currently playing sounds, but no such thing exists. Hey guys, Wolfcast from the future here. I was watching a 3 clicks Vote video about CSGO sounds, and he mentioned a command called SND Show, which displays all currently playing sounds. It exists in Half-Life, but only shows the sounds in the console. It still wouldn't have helped me much since it shows it for the entire map, but the command does exist, so now I feel even more like an idiot. Was this the end? I mean, the sound had to come from somewhere. The entity report did give me a vital piece of information though. On this rail right here, there's an ambient generic that plays Squeak's Chill. This sound also plays in this location. Now, I didn't recall hearing this sound in the game, and I was getting ready to start just deleting sounds until I could isolate it. But then, before I was about to compile and run the map, I figured out what was going on. If you have ever played Half-Life Deathmatch, or hell, even Sven Cobb, I have no doubt that you have heard this sound before. Now, what you may not realize is that this is a sped up version of this sound. 
Now, this is very important because I now knew that the sound was being manipulated in some way to sound like this, and it had to be Squeaks 2 because I couldn't hear it in game. So I opened up Audacity and imported Squeaks 2. I decided that I should slow it down by 50%. It sounded very similar, so I knew this was our sound. So I slowed it down again by 50%, and it sounded identical. I went back into Hammer and looked at this week's 2 entity, and I noticed something, and felt like an idiot. There is a setting for pitch. 100 is the normal pitch, and Squeaks 2 was set to 25. So that means in Audacity, it would need to be pitch shifted down by negative 75%. Since half of a half is a fourth, and since it's out of 100, then the pitch would need to be 75. But since we're pitching it down, it would need to be negative 75. And this was definitely the most exciting thing that I have ever done. I had forgotten that Gold Source was capable of pitch shifting sounds, but then again, Gold Source was definitely ahead of its time. I mean, just take a look at Morphe Black's YouTube channel. The videos that he has made on Half-Life 1 alone should give you an idea of how insane Gold Source is. And just to think that some content was cut from Half-Life 1 because of engine limitations. You know, come to think of it, the Half-Life Alpha would be something interesting to cover on this channel due to the sheer expansiveness and oddness of it. And hell, if I'm feeling ambitious enough and if time permits, I may even talk about, dare I say it, the Half-Life 2 Beta. But I am going to have to call it here. So do all that good stuff, like, subscribe, comment, preferably in that uh, order, and I will see you all next Friday or soon.